Welcome to our very first Chicken Nugget series, where I show you how to set up something in bite-sized chunks. So we're going to look at NTP, Network Time Protocol. Um, even though it does a very simple job, right, it gets time, the correct time, uh, it's not that easy to set up, surprisingly. Even uh, Starlight Glimmer had some issues, and she's the uh, time-traveling expert. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So here I have a basic router. Right, and it's connected to the internet. That's pretty much it. So let's get into our console. And before we set up NTP, there's a couple of things we need to set up. First, we need to set up our time zone, and then our summertime, right? Uh, fall back, spring ahead, and then set our clock as accurate as possible. We want our clock to be as close as possible to the NTP server, uh, the time that we're syncing with. Otherwise, it won't sync. And surprisingly, <laughs> it could take up to 15 minutes so it's not super fast it's not gonna happen instantly so uh, just give it some time so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into enable mode actually global configuration clock time zone and then the word of your um, standard time zone right this is not daylight saving time this is the standard and it's just a word it's it's not really doesn't really do anything it's not meaningful but <clears throat> what you want to do is make it meaningful. So my time zone is Central Standard Time. It doesn't set that doesn't really set the time. Okay, that's just a word. What really sets the time is negative six because my um, offset from Universal Time is negative six for my time zone, and you want that to be your standard time zone. Okay. Next, we're gonna do clock summer time and then another word uh, make it meaningful it doesn't actually set the summer time the keyword clock summer time does and then actually c s t c d t central daylight time this is mine um, and then we're going to do reoccurring there we go so uh, what it'll do is look at the the date and say okay um, like I said earlier uh, fall behind spring ahead reoccurring means do it every year right so we set our standard time zone and then we also set our um, summertime right daylight savings time that goes on and off and that would be CDT for me okay now we're gonna do clock set and then, actually, <laughs> interestingly enough, we have to go to um, enable mode. So clock um, set. And then we're going to put in the time in, uh, I believe it's 24-hour time. So right now it is 13, um, 14, and then 0, 0. So it would be right now it's 1.14 p.m. So it would be 13.14. And then today's date, the 19th of May. 2018 so we're gonna set the clock right and now um, that we set the clock now if we go ahead and set up the NTP um, server here so we do show NTP status you'll see that it's unsynchronized it's not working properly um, I had this set up before um, if you haven't set it up on your router it'll say NTP um, not set up or something to that effect but what we'll do next is after we get that um, rolling is we're going to do um, global configuration, NTP server. Then we're going to put in the um, IP address, 7.6.15.28. That's just one IP address I found out on the internet. You can find a bunch. You can Google that. So we'll do show NTP status. Actually, we have to... Go back to <laughs> enable mode, show NTP status. Okay, so it's uh, unsynchronized, um, no reference clock, so show NTP associations. You can see that um, this is my clock, 129.6.15.28 um, out in the internet. That's a NIST clock and has a stratum level of 1. Okay, so we'll wait for that to sync. Um, it may take a while. Let's do show clock 
I want to see if it's accurate. Okay, so it's pretty accurate right now. Um, you want it as close as possible, even down to the second if you can get it. So it takes a, uh, a little bit of work to do that. So you have to go a minute ahead with the clock's um, set command and then look at your actual real clock and then just hit enter at the right, at the right second. So that's uh, the best way to do it. You want it as close as possible. Um, so we're just going to leave it there. Um, this is going to take a while. Show NTP um, status. Yeah, unsynchronized. So it's going to take a bit. Uh, in the meantime, um, let's talk about the two commands. So there's NTP server and NTP master. Now, for example, in a production network, if you want to be the one that gets the time from the Internet and serve it to all your internal clients, right? You go out to the Internet, um, out there on the Internet, there's an NTP server. This becomes your you know, NTP server for your um, network, and then you pass it out to all your internal clients. You do not need the NTP uh, master command. Um, what that does is it tells the router um, that um, what's its stratum level, right? So how it works is the lower the number, the more trusted the clock. So on the Internet, the stratum level is going to be like 1, right? And, for example, if you set your stratum level on your router here to NTP master stratum, I don't know, of, let's say, 4, everything is fine and dandy. Okay. The problem comes into play when, for example, um, let's say the stratum level from the clock you're getting, for example, uh, let's say on the internet it comes back as stratum level four, right? And you set your master NTP master to stratum of, let's say two. Well, what's going to happen is it's never going to sync on the internet because the router will say, oh, I'm more trusted. I have a lower stratum level, so my internal clock will be used. Um, instead of actually syncing and anybody else that connects to it in your internal network to this router the starlight router will sync with the internal clock and it will not sync with the actual NTP clock out on the internet so that's another gotcha so all you need is NTP server on your network and then you're completely fine and you can point any other client to that server so I could point another router here to starlight and say NTP server is going to be like 192.168, whatever my internal FP addressing scheme is. Right? So it's very simple. In a lab environment, you'll need to set up NTP master because you need at least one clock that's trusted. So you're going to have to do that in a lab environment. But if you're in the production network, you're not going to use that. There are some rare cases that you'll use that. But uh, <laughs> it got me in trouble because I remember at work I ran into some, to, uh, ran into some issues. So those are some gotchas. So basically, again, um, set up the time zone, standard time zone, um, the summertime, right, the reoccurring uh, fallback, spring ahead, and then set your clock as close as possible to the clock you're trying to sync with. Um, and then basically it's just a waiting game at that point. So let's take a look at unsynchronized. So we're just going to let this cook for a bit, show NTP ass. <laughs> I like that. Good, man. Um, still trying to sync. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll be right back. I'm back and it's been about like 15 minutes. So let's check out the uh, NTP. So show NTP status. As you can see, it's now synchronized. Um, we have a stratum level of 2 now, it looks like, and that's my reference clock. Show NTP S. <laughs> uh, you can see there's the, the, re the reference clock NIST. Um, it's stratum level of one. You can see peer. Looks like it was synced. Obviously, it said right here um, it was synchronized. So that's pretty much it. Just a couple of gotchas is that you need to set your clock, time zone, you know, daylight savings time. Make sure all of that is super accurate down to the, like the second <laughs> is helpful. And then uh, you go ahead and put in the NTP server command. And that's it. So I hope that was helpful and thank you for watching.